Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder that affects between 8 and 10 million people worldwide. Today is World Parkinson's Day, a day that provides an opportunity to stand in solidarity with people affected by this condition. And joining me right now to talk more about it is Dr. Darren Moore, chair of Van Andel Institute's Department of Neurodegenerative Science. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Moore. Thanks for having me. Well, there is currently no cure for Parkinson's disease, but there are several treatments that can help. Any new promising treatment on the horizon? Where do we stand with this? Yeah, there's, uh, there's quite a few things in the pipeline. So we have, um, there's no cure for Parkinson's today, but we have um, many therapies that treat the symptoms very well uh, for many years. So that's where we stand uh, in terms of medication. Um, one new approach is uh, repurposing drugs or other diseases, such as diabetes, that may have some indication that they may also protect the brain and work in Parkinson's. So we, um, we here at Van Andel Institute spearhead something called the International Link Clinical Trials uh, Initiative, along with Cure Parkinson's in the UK, uh, where we repurpose FDA-approved drugs uh, that may have, you know, for other diseases that may have uh, effects in Parkinson's. So one example of that is um, a drug called Exenatide, which actually uh, treats type 2 diabetes. Um, and uh, th this is now in phase 3 clinical trials and should read out later this year. And um, we just uh, finished a phase 2 trial, uh, sponsoring a phase 2 trial for Lixensenatide, which also um, is an is a, a anti-diabetic drug and it seems to have um, beneficial effects on slowing uh, motor decline in, in Parkinson's patients in a, in a trial in France recently, in a small phase two trial. So kind of exciting times. We also have a phase three trial of a cough medicine called Ambroxol. Um, a, a strange cough medicine, but for some reason it seems to have effects on the brain. And so these are kind of repurposing efforts. Uh, we also uh, are kind of getting more clues about Parkinson's and what causes it. And so that's leading to new targets that we're uh, are currently in clinical trials, uh, you know, throughout the Parkinson's uh, landscape. This certainly sounds promising. Interesting connection there with those drugs and possibly helping the symptoms. So taking a look at these last few years, are more people getting diagnosed with Parkinson's? Or, or do more people suffer from it than in the past? Or what are we seeing with the numbers? I, I think we're getting better at diagnosing who has Parkinson's and, and you know, also detecting them before sometimes they even develop motor problems, uh, what we call a prodromal phase of disease. So we can we can find things like sleep disturbances and uh, constipation and, and psychiatric symptoms that kind of pre precede the motor symptoms. But there also seems to be an increased burden in general in, in society over, over the past 50, 60 years. This may be due to uh, industrialization. We, we don't quite know. There's a lot of studies out there, but it does seem to be rising in, in prevalence. Roughly affects about 1 million Americans at this point in time. Yeah. Wow. Do you think new technology could better help determine what causes this condition in the future? Yeah, I think uh, definitely there's been uh, some really nice developments recently in uh, biomarker development. This would be a um, like a skin test or a, or a a uh, spinal tap, uh, some sort of biopsy that could allow you to see whether you have Parkinson's and how you might respond to medication. Well, it's certainly fascinating, and it's good to know that progress is being made on this. Dr. Darren Moore, chair of Van Andel Institute's Department of Neurodegenerative Science, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.